He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome to Coast View, the show that celebrates the men and women who are making coastal Mississippi such an amazing place to live, work, and play. Uh, I hope you're having a great day here on Friday. We have uh, a wonderful guest we'll introduce here in a second for the first half of the show, and then Jeff Duncan from the athletic coming up in the second half of the show. But let me, let me mention this first. If you haven't been to the 228 Awards website, 228awards.com, go there and listen to uh, the incredibly well produced uh, show, uh, Unleashing the Winners. Um, 13,000 nominations from Coastal Mississippi, over 300,000 votes, and 215 uh, different categories. It's the best of the best in the 228, and it's by uh, the multiple stations that are part of Super Talk Mississippi uh, Media. Hey, I wanted to share something from uh, Robbie D'Angelo. He's uh, been on the show so many times. He's the human optimization coach. He said this, you can't make things better till you stop making things worse. <laughs> That's a really good way to say it. And uh, look, Mindy Patton, who works at the station with us, she uh, she wrote this from uh, Robert Brault. It says, an optimist is this, someone who figures that taking a step backward after taking a step forward is not a disaster. It's actually the cha-cha. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, hey, look, I have really looked forward to the show today. I have my friend, Beverly Martin, who's the District 1 Supervisor and the current Board President of the Board of Supervisors for Harrison County. Uh, we'll talk a lot about a, a bunch of different stuff, but before we go any further, let me bring uh, Beverly in and just say good morning. How are you doing, old friend? Good morning, my friend. How are you? We have seen a lot of change over the many, many years. And what's interesting, I love doing this show, Beverly, and I took about five months to decide to do it because I'd been retired for four years. I'm still retired. I come into this, you know, my studio here at the house, the Coastal Mississippi studio, and uh, I had this opportunity to reconnect with the community, something I always enjoy doing. But what's interesting about this show is that when I have a conversation with someone like you, who's an old friend who I worked so hard with in the community over so many years, I always learn something new about you. It's a chance to like focus just on you. I don't have a big business to run and all this other stuff in the way. I get to talk, think about Beverly Martin for 24 hours. And so what I learned about you is something that I found so interesting. For example, while you were in high school, you were a rod and reel mechanic at Kirk's Tackle Shop. I used to go to Kirk's so Tackle what? Shop. Did you? But that, yeah. So, uh, and I've got a couple of reels here that need to be repaired. So, I wonder, <laughs> how, do you still remember how to do that? Some of them I did. It's funny. I had a friend just this morning that asked me about a couple of reels he dropped off, but I, it's just. <laughs> Not something I really do much. Either. Yeah, I, I know. It's just funny, though. You, it's interesting it how you begin to lay a foundation in your life doing a job like that. Kirk's was kind of the center of the universe for outdoorsmen during those days, wasn't it? It sure was. And we sold hunting and fishing license. So the biggest issue I would have, people would bring their reels in in a brown paper bag. And Mr. <laughs> Kirk would have to wait until they left because they didn't want a girl working on them. They didn't think that <laughs> I could do it. So when they walked out the door, he'd hand them to me, and I'd put them back together for me. Well, good, good for you. So it was good fun. for you. you. You've got a history of putting things together. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, a long, long history. You know, one, one of the things I wanted to start out with, we'll talk a lot about sort of, you know, your life coming up yep. in the first right. segment, and then we'll we'll finish off whatever's, whatever we haven't talked about, and then we'll talk about your priorities as a president of the Board of Supervisors in the second segment. But... You know, at what point did you sort of understand that tourism and your work in tourism was going to sort of define you as a leader in the community? I think whenever I went to work for the Mississippi Coast Restaurant and Beverage Association, and I loved it. You know, we did get a lot of tourists in, even at Kurt's Tackle Shop. We had tourists come in. So I've always, I guess, been on the fringes. But when I started at the Mississippi Coast Restaurant and Beverage Association, that's when I fell in love with it because I worked for all the restaurant owners, all the bar owners, and, of course, all the hotel people, and it was all tourist. So it was yeah. always something new and fun and different. 
Well, what's interesting about your your sort of career, your each step that you took along the way, each step of responsibility for different aspects of um, of you know the the tourism economy leading to your role in gaming. Mm-hmm. Each step sort of prepared you for the next step. So, I mean, it's, it's really kind of interesting that that early role that you said began to define you in tourism, but what you learned about the role that restaurants and hotels and other mm-hmm. hospitality attractions played and the success of Coastal Mississippi was incredibly important to you, wasn't it? Absolutely. I really had did not have any idea how vital tourism is to this Mississippi Gulf Coast. I mean, it is incredibly into the entire state, but especially here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It was our lifeblood. Then you had opportunities to do things like uh, work on cruising the coast in the early days of cruising the coast. And once again, you know, this is before gaming, you know, this is, you know, this is when we're trying to, how can we really begin to take um, to do the kind of a, a attraction, the, the kind of events here that would that would extend the summer season, so to speak. Um, well, actually, that was me, a, a major undertaking, wasn't it? Yes, but let me uh, correct you on that. Actually, cruising the coast was an idea that the casino operators brought here there was a car show so it was after gaming oh that's right i, I yeah. thank you for clearing there was me up a car there. show right. in reno nevada called hot august nights there were two general managers wayne yarbrough and jack barrett wayne ran the boomtown and jack ran casino magic biloxi those two guys had both come from reno so they mentioned it at a meeting at that time i was the director of the mississippi Casino Operators Association. So they were my bosses and they brought it up and wanted to know if they, if I thought that would be something that would go over well here. I had no idea. I knew one person in a car club and it was the late Daryl Keith who ran the Pepsi plant. And I knew Daryl from my days with the Restaurant and Beverage Association. So I went to him and, and he introduced me to some more car club people and it just kind of snowballed from there and wayne at boomtown already had a relationship with a couple of car clubs so it just went from there and now it's a great event but yeah the date in october was very specifically chosen because it was a way to extend the tourist season because it was it was really a dead time i had woody on and he he went through that history really well woody bailey has has Mm -hmm. been you're, you're, you're and all of our partners in that effort from the very beginning. And, uh, yeah, and you're right. I'm glad to, that you, that you corrected me on that, but that, but what you learned about how something like that can really feed people from all over the country in the coast of Mississippi, man, that was really defining moments for coast of Mississippi, wasn't it? It was, it really was. And see, when I was at the restaurant association, we had something called Chefs of the Coast that also grew into huge. There's a lot of uh, copycat events now, I guess you could say. But Chefs of the Coast was free gaming and they would give away Cadillacs, big screen TVs. We'd have basically a drawdown. So we'd sell 100 tickets at 100 bucks a piece. And it was just a huge event for the coast. And it was at the Coast Coliseum. And so from that event, we went to the Cruise in the Coast event to the Southern Gaming Summit, which ended up being the largest gaming show outside of Las Vegas. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore, but it, it was huge at it one time. It was very significant. In fact, people like me, as I was coming up at the Sun Herald and as publisher, I even spoke at the, at the summit from time to time, but I would always go because it was a great way to understand what were the challenges in, in gaming across the United States, you know, what's happening, what trends exist that could affect coastal Mississippi, what opportunities were there for coastal Mississippi, how did we fit into the larger picture what the new technology was going to be, you know, who the leaders were. And the, and I mean, it, it was a, it was a re, sort of revolutionary, wasn't it? It was Ricky. You know, we met some pretty interesting people over the years at the summit. We got an opportunity to meet Steve Wynn and Ralph Inglestad and all the, uh, Mr. Binion and just all of the people that really put gaming on the map in Las Vegas 
came here to see us in Biloxi. So it was kind of exciting. So one day we're going to, I have to, I have to spend a show to talk about Steve Wynn and Ralph Engelstad and yes. the building of the bow and the IP and the, mm-hmm. the fight that when, uh, who's going to have the tallest building and adding the floor without anybody knowing about it. Those were some dynamic days, weren't they? They were. And you know, that first game in summit, we wanted to make a big splash. So we actually invited both Steve Wynn and Ralph Engelstadt to be speakers at the same dinner at the same game and summit. Unbeknownst to me, they were mortal enemies. I had no idea. So it didn't it didn't go over well. Both of them were very much gentlemen, but um, never made that mistake again. We're having a conversation with Beverly Martin, an old friend, uh, someone who's been in, really committed her life to tourism and to public service. She's the president of the Harrison County Board of Supervisors. And we'll continue the conversation on the other side. We'll see you after this break. Broadcasting safe and sound from the coastal Mississippi studios. This is Coast View View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk 103.1. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. I'm having a a delightful meeting with an old friend, uh, Beverly Martin, who's the current president of the Board of Supervisors for Harrison County. She's been a supervisor since 2016. Her term, current term uh, ends at the end of 2023. And, um, you know, she's just a a consummate community leader in multiple different ways. There's so much to talk about. I wish we had dedicated a whole show. But let's just shift gears a little bit. Katrina hits, wipes out the world that we're in. And I remember being at so many meetings with you in so many different ways, whether it's through the governor's commission or whether it was to, you know, our strategizing around the need to get land-based and all the work that we were doing there. Um, we, there, there was no rest for the weary in those days, was there? There was. And let me tell you, your leadership and your role with the newspaper that you really stepped up and it really, the, the entire industry appreciated it. it we really did. Well, and I remember those days well, very well. Well, I remember them well, too. And I remember how tired we were. <laughs> I remember how determined we were. And failure was not an option on this land base deal. And I'll, I'll just remind people one thing, and then you tell me what sticks out to you. In order to, Haley Barber often said after the storm that the most important thing we can do is get people their jobs back and get them their schools back. And then we'll work on temporary housing and whatever. But if we don't get their jobs back and get their kids' schools back open, then we're going to have, we're going we're to lose a lot of people. So the focus was really on the number one industry, the gaming industry, to get them back open as quickly as possible. The only way they were going to invest ultimately collectively billions of dollars in rebuilding was to have land based. And, uh, and so we, un- we ensued on that effort, and it was, a, it was a very dramatic accomplishment to have gotten that in such a short period of time. But what do you remember about that most? Well, I remember um, spending a lot of time in Jackson, as you well know. But the biggest thing was getting the other casinos on board. The, some even on the coast weren't real sure if they wanted to go shore-based, as we referred to it, but everybody came together. And then we had to talk to the River Counties and the Tunica area casinos to make sure they would not fight us on it. And they stepped up and agreed that they wouldn't, that as long as we kept it on the coast, they were fine with it. So they they recognized the need for us to recover. I mean, it was 17,000 employees out of work. So it, the, and, and, and then the ancillary businesses connected to those for every casino Correct. job. There were other jobs that were related to that. So it yeah. was so important. I remember when we had this the kickoff of the Governor's Commission, Billy McCoy, who I've become friends with, uh, he was Speaker of the House, as we both know, a Democrat, you know, not mm-hmm. someone you would think would sol- that would uh, help move something like this along. Right. Based gaming. 
And he put his arm around me after this, after the meeting. And he just said, if there, it, you know, I'm going to help you guys do whatever I have to do. Yeah. I will do whatever I can do to help you. And man, he did that, didn't he? He sure did. He sure did. And he wasn't the only one. I think we had Tim Ford up there in our corner and yeah. some Charlie Williams, some longtime legislators that helped us convince enough of the legislators to vote in our favor. And they, and I mean, it was only a couple of votes, but it, yeah. that's all we needed. That's all we, we needed. It, you know, the, it was, you're right. It was the collective energy, the number of leaders involved from so many different dimensions, from, from Haley Barber, all the political leadership, all the way down to you know, local leaders, elected uh, local leaders. Everyone was focused on that, and we accomplished a great goal. So when you, when you think about what made you decide to sort of move into an elected role, what was going through your mind? I think I realized over the years, you know, in my role as director of the Gaming Association, a large part of that was lobbying. And I always enjoyed it, but I got an opportunity to learn how the process worked, which was a lot more than I had ever hoped for. So eventually, when they moved the Gaming Association, they shut the local office down, moved it to Jackson. I wasn't did not want to go to Jackson. That just wasn't in my, my son was still in high school, as you know, or just starting college and just wasn't going to work. So in the meantime, I um, got to, was approached by a couple of friends that said, Beverly, why don't you run for supervisor? At that time, the current supervisor was in the mayor's race, Wendy Sweatman, who's a dear friend. And so we, I thought, well, you know what? I will. I, I'd like to try it was supposed to be a part-time job. What they didn't, what people don't know, it's a part-time job with full-time responsibility. So it's <laughs> really not a part-time job. Really not. Well, well, the Board of Supervisors um, across coastal Mississippi and all three coastal Mississippi counties, they, they have such important roles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once you, once you got elected, I wasn't surprised you were elected, incidentally. You were, you know, you had so much so much, uh, you know, I've experienced and so many relationships and name recognition. But once you got in, um, what's what's the thing that you enjoy the most about what you do? The public. I actually loved working with the public. What I didn't realize is how many services and what kind of services that Harrison County offers to the public. I mean, it's everything from senior companions, which are other seniors that go sit with seniors just to let their caregivers get out for a couple of hours. And I mean, it's just amazing. So it's not just paving roads. We supply library systems. We fund a veterans affairs department that's second to none. It's the top in the state. So if there's a veteran that needs help applying for benefits, this is a one woman show and she is a dynamite, dynamite. But just the range of services that we offer to our citizens is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You also you also make in really really important appointments to boards and yes. strategically important organizations that you know really drive success in, in in the community. That that's that that has to be something that you think a lot about and making sure you're making the right appointments, et cetera. I do. You know, in our Coastal Mississippi board, my particular appointments, and as well as pretty much the other board members, but mine have always and will always be connected to tourism. I just think that's a number one requirement. Now, on the Harrison County Development Commission, I appoint people from the business community because I think they're the best first to bring in different kinds of businesses and create jobs. So I try to match my particular appointments with the board that they're going to be sitting on. So Beverly, in the time we have left, you, being president of the board is not a new concept for you. You've had this experience before. You're back in that role again. What are your priorities? I think I want to educate the public more about what our services are. Now that the COVID, there appears to be a light at the end of the tunnel, we can go back because things have not been at all normal this last year. So we're going to try to go back focus on our seniors, provide meals, do the companion program, get all that up and running, get our senior citizen centers back open, you know, all the services that 
had basically had to stop because of the COVID. So now we're, we've had a year to think about how to improve them. We've come up with new programs. And I think the public, when they're ready to get out, they're going to be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, the, the state is making good uh, progress on the vaccines. Uh, the inventory, current inventory, over 70 percent has been actually in arms. Uh, the, the somewhere over 14 percent of the total population has actually gotten a vaccine now. So um, and just because the, the governor has sort of dropped the mandate doesn't mean people shouldn't still be careful. We, we, we make sure that we talk about that because, you know, people have to make the right choices for themselves. But um, COVID is not is, we have not, you know, battled it away yet. We still have a little bit of work to do. So you still have to be careful. But you're right. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And as we be and you know, here's the other thing, Beverly, it will never go back to what it was before. We're it's going to be different. And we've learned a lot about how to do things remotely and how to manage more efficiently. And that's really going to change your role in some ways, isn't it? It really, it really is because in a way, it's been a good experience. I had never even heard of Zoom prior to this happening. And now Zoom's like a second nature to everybody. It's kind of funny. But that's one of the programs that we're going to start showing our seniors is how to FaceTime, how to Zoom, get them so they can stay connected with their families if something like this ever happens and even if it doesn't they can every day they can talk to those grandchildren so that's actually one of the things that we talked about doing that has come and been born out of this covid pandemic yeah well do you i I just wonder about the future um what what happens beyond 2023 i'll be honest with you i'm kind of looking at maybe um taking a next step maybe checking out Washington. But really? We'll see. we'll see. I've, uh, you know, I got a husband, and I bless his heart. He's, he's, says he's on board, but we're gonna find out for sure. If he is. But <laughs> well, yes, he he's a of- smart guy. He's an accomplished guy, and he understands what you're involved in. And to have, you know, to be successful at what you do, you have to have someone who's with you, a partner Absolutely. in life who is with you, who gets the complexity of it and supports you in that effort. And when he married you, the truth is he knew what he was getting into. I mean, this he is sure so did. You're, you're, you're going to, my sense is you may never retire. You'll do this for the rest of your life, doing something that yes. involves giving to the community. Listen, Beverly, we're out of time. But man, was it fun to talk to you. And I wish we'd have taken a whole show because you have so much you've you've contributed to Coastal Mississippi and you're really important to us. And I congratulate you on your continued commitment and thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And it's great seeing you again. Good to see you too. This has been Beverly Martin, the president of the Harrison County Board of Supervisors. And we'll see you after this. Coast View on Super Talk 103.1 is brought to you by J. Allen Toyota on I-10 exit 38 Gulfport. See all the incredible inventory at allentoyota.com. And remember, when you think Toyota, think J. Allen Toyota.